الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد Welcome back to the uh, new lesson of the book Sifat al-Salat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The book by our Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Al-Hadina al-Bani rahmatullahi alayhi uh, Led by our Sheikh, by our Sheikh Abu Suhaib Today is part 16 and it is the 10th of October 2024 Which coincides with the 8th of Rabi' al-Akhir If you always make the Hijri before hmm. the Gregorian Jazakallah he sallallahu alayhi wa said the worst thief is he who steals from his prayer a companion asked O messenger of Allah how does a person steal from his prayer he sallallahu alayhi wa replied he does not complete its rukur and sujood once bismillah bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala amma ba'd we are still in the Subtitle Wujub al Tumatnina fi Rukur. That is, it is compulsory to be having Tumatnina, tranquility, settlement. A person who is in a settle in his Rukur. And this is not just a compulsory, but it's a pillar. So it's a compulsory plus. The person, if he's not having Tumatnina in his Rukur, his Rukur will be invalid, which will invalidate that Raka'ah, and which will invalidate any Raka'ah after that invalid Raka'ah. So remember that if you have an invalid raka, it will invalidate whatever comes after it. And here the Prophet ﷺ, he said there are types of thieves. So there are thieves of the property, thieves of the money, thieves of whatever. Here there's a thief, which is a person whom people would never think and all label him as to be a thief. And that is the person who steals from his salah. Now the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Messenger of Allah, how can the person will steal from his salah. He says, Prophet ﷺ, he does not perfect his ruku' or the ruku' of the prayer or the sujood of the prayer. Perfection here, I mean, is meaning settlement. It's not to me prolonging the ruku'. No, it's actually to give it its adequate time. And the adequate time is that all your bones of the, of the, the back of yours to be in a position which we have explained the last time, that your hands onto your knees and slightly away the elbows from the body, and it is your butt and your back is straight, it's not going down or going up, and also your head is going in level with your back, it's not tilting upwards or tilting downwards, and to say the minimum, Subhana Rabbi Al Alim, and that is like in this way, Subhana Rabbi Al Alim. If you said this, you have perfected. Oh, you have at least gave the adequate rukur time and the same thing for the sujood. So this person, he steals from that prayer, meaning it's not giving it the time. It's supposed to be stealing from the time. And he's the worst of the thief because the thief, in terms of money-wise, is not as bad as this one. And the prayer person, when he steals from his rukur, is going to steal from his prayer. He steals from his prayer, he's stealing from something which is more important than stealing the money. Now we come into the following hadith. And also, once he وسلم, was praying, when he glanced out of the corner of his eye at a man, not settling his backbone in rukur and sujood. After the man finished his prayer, he وسلم, said, O assembly of Muslims, there is no prayer of the one who does not straighten his back in ruku' and sujood. Continue. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, the prayer of a man is invalid until he straightens his back in ruku' and sujood. So the importance of the straightening of the back and giving it the right time is that it will not be valid if you don't do so. That's the importance of it. Yeah. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw with his mu'akhari ayn, that means the back of his eye, a man and the Prophet of Allah, while he is leading the prayer, he has this specialty of seeing behind. But here, the Prophet وسلم, he could be maybe uh, seeing him actually with his with his eye. But the Prophet of Allah, even if he did not see him with the back of his eye like this, he's got eyes in the back, meaning he could see. Allah will give him revelation to show him what is in his back. But here, he saw him. He saw him with the actual eye of his that. This man does not straighten up his back in his rukur, nor he does not straighten and have his back and make it not a hump, okay, in his sujood. 
So the Prophet ﷺ addressed this issue, and you notice here, he addressed it in general. He did not say so-and-so, straighten up, because maybe it would be embarrassing for that person. He said, oh, Muslims, assembly with Muslims. There's no prayer for the person who does not does the straighten up in the back in the ruku or the sujood. Now we come into the following title, which is to do with the adhkar of the ruku. Tfadda. The adhkar of the ruku. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say different types of adhkar and supplications, one of the following at a time. What that means, we don't lump them together. So you choose one of them and you start repeating. But you don't see say one, two, three, four, five in one ruku. So you repeat, for example, number one, you repeat number two, you repeat number three, you repeat number four. That's how the Prophet used to do it, but he does not mix them and make like a, a mixture of dua of them. Fadl. The first one, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. How perfect is my Lord, the Supreme, three times. Okay. Subhana Rabbi al Azim here, and then it says in bracket three times. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. So you could say it once, you could say it twice, you could say it three times. And here you count one, Subhana Rabbi al Azim means you count. This is number one, number two, number three. After number three, there's no counting. So there's no such thing, no, four, subhanahu wa ta'ala, five, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you're going to end up maybe making about 200 of tasbih while you're doing your night prayer. So the counting is up to three. And remember the companions, radiallahu anhu wa ardahum, that uh, basically they used to, uh, um, that they, they, they never, for example, limit the number to the three, but they used to measure that, and you could estimate the time of the Prophet ﷺ in his ruku and his sujood. And this criterion by how they measure is alternates, it goes differently. For example, Abdullah ibn al Mubarak, he says that it is better and recommended for the Imam to make tasbih five times so that the people behind him do at least three times. As for to make sujood sahu, if for example, as some of the scholars, they said that if you had exceeded nine tasbih, you make sujood sahu, and or to make the tasbih is to be an odd, so you have to can't do it six, you have to do it seven, you can do it eight, you can do it nine, okay? Um, so, and, and whatever, is uh, above the three is not correct. There's no proof for that. There's no proof for that. So the Prophet of Allah would, would say from one to three, yes. But after that, we don't know how many tasbih, if he wants to increase on that. You could keep saying, Subhana Rabbi al Azim up to an equivalent to a recitation of three long surahs, like what happened one night when a very familiar man, he was with the Prophet وسلم, He had recited Al Baqarah, Al Nisa, Al Imran. And he was doing that tasbih. So, the, as I said, there's no such thing to make sujood as-sahu if you have made it more than nine. There's no sujood as-sahu uh, or, or anything that is more than the three. And there is no such thing that there is a recommendation to make the number odd. So a person is now doing tasbih. Subhanahu Rabbi al-Azim 99. Subhanahu Rabbi al-Azim 100. Subhanahu Rabbi al-Azim 101. I can't finish on 100. That's incorrect. Don't busy yourself with these numbering. Okay, so there is no recommendation whether it is odd or even number. Uh, after the three, there is no recommendation of anything. Fadl. But sometimes he used to say it more than three times. Once in the night prayer, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated it excessively until the length of time of his standing in prayer was nearly the length of time of his ruku'ah. Not only did he recite in one ruku'ah or in one raka'ah three long surahs, al-Baqarah and Nisa and Ali Imran, but further supplicated and asked for Allah's forgiveness, as was previously mentioned in the section of recitation in night prayer. Okay, so by the way, when he said sometimes he would make it more than three times, it's not just in the voluntary prayer, you could do it in the obligatory prayer. But remember, if you are an imam, you have to accommodate for those people who are behind you. Now, some people are weak, some people are old, some people have got something to do. I mean, if you have exceeded, let's say... Uh, maybe 11 tasbihat or 10 tasbihat, and you're doing like, subhanahu rabbi al I think people will start complaining. Unless they train them. At least you train them. Okay? Training them is good. Don't do, surprise them with that. In my masjid, for example, in Maidenhead, the Imam, alhamdulillah, is now, he is actually making his tasbih maybe 10 to 12 times. Subhanahu rabbi al Subhanahu rabbi al Subhanahu rabbi al 12 times. And the people that got used to it. So if you go there and pray 
uh, and lead them. And for example, in your own uh, uh, three tasbih or five tasbih, they will say to you, what's wrong with you? Now, objecting on shortening now the time because they got used to the what? A longer time. So it is what the Imam it trains the people to do. So here the Prophet وسلم, he used to recite in Surah Salat al Layl, Al Baqarah, when Nisa Ali Imran, as we discussed before. And the recitation is not just recitation of the surahs, but also in between the verses, there is Jannah. Oh, Prophet Allah would ask for the Jannah. There's forgiveness, you'll ask Allah's forgiveness. There's hellfire, he would seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire. All of that added to the time of the three surahs. Then he makes the ruku'ah. And the ruku'ah is equivalent to all of that time that he spent recitation of the three surahs, including the dua inside them. So imagine, I mean, that's a Sheikh al Albani should say that these two rak'ah, they took from the Prophet Sallam all night. Okay, all night. But it's not really something that the Prophet does it, does it all, all the time. That's why Hudayf ibn al-Yamar radiallahu anhu wa arda, he did only, did that only once. Prophet he did more than once, but he never went with the Prophet to Allah again. Allah ibn Mas'ud, the same thing, only once, never did it with the Prophet Sallam again. Now. The second dhikr. Subhana Rabbi al-Azim wa bihamdi. How perfect is my Lord, the Supreme, praise be he. And in brackets three times. Okay, Subhana Rabbi al-Azim, and you add wa bihamdi. I used to do the following when I was a kid because I used to follow the people. Uh, Subhana Rabbi al-Azim bihamdi. Subhana Rabbi al-Azim bihamdi. That's not right. Subhana Rabbi al-Azim wa, wa bihamdi. And so that's uh, another one. So, and I lead the prayer myself. I would use this. And I would use it, for example, a minimum of seven times so that people can have at least three or four or five, whatever, as long as three and plus. So remember, some people, they make tasbih like this. Subhana. That's equivalent to two. And some people, they say, sub, 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 sub. Shorten it. And sub, sub, sub means like insultation, insultation, insultation. Because sabba means insulted. Some people, there's a shortening. Sub, 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 sub. Like this, you have them. Okay. And if one, when you make this, we said a number of times, do not annoy your neighbor. Some people, they were talking about you. You can be like, what is this? You're chewing food here. You just be for yourself. Not for yourself, the other person to hear your tasbih. Only move your lips and your tongue. Now, number three. Subuhun Qudusun Rabbul Malaikati Wal Ruh. Right. Subuhun Qudus. As Subuh or As Sabuh. So both are correct. The more common use As Subuh. There is As Sabuh, Fatha on the Shadda. And on the Shadda, As Sabuh. And there's As Subuh. And more common to be used As Subuh. Subuhun Quddus Rabbul Malaikati Wal Ruh. Please can you just translate for me? Perfect are you, blessed are you, Lord of the angels and the spirit. So Subuh and Quddus are from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's being glorified and being praised. Tasbih and, 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 and the Tasbih to say Subhanallah and that is exaltation of the Allah and Taqdis. Uh, also, this is as well from uh, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tasbih and taqdis is from the sifat of Allah azza wa jal. And here he says, Rabbul malaikati wa ruh, the Lord of the angels. And what he said, ruh? The spirit. The spirit. That's not correct translation. Because his translation literally, not the meaning, the actual. Ruh here is not the spirit. Here is either Jibreel alayhi salam or it was said, a particular type of angels, or it was said as a third opinion, as the greatest of all angels. That is an angel who is uh, more greater in, in 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 creation. Sorry, more bigger, I should say, in in uh, creation than the normal angel. The most common uh, meaning of all of those three meanings is that is Jibril alayhi salam. Nazal bihi al amin. Allah revealed that the Quran was being sent down. And by Ar Ruh Al Amin, the trustworthy Ruh here, Jibreel alayhi salam. So Ar Ruh is Jibreel alayhi salam. Faddal for number four. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma firli. How perfect you are, O Allah, and praises are for you. O Allah, forgive me. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say often in his ruku' and sujood, acting upon the. He would say that, dua, is it? Yes, that's what's connected to. Yeah, but can you read again? And he. And he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would say it often in his ruku'ah. Say what? Say it? Say, is this, say it. 
say it. Yeah, the words we didn't hear that it gone. Say the dua often in his ruku' and sujood, acting upon the command uh, of the Quran. He, acting upon the Quran, they ta'awwaru Quran. It means take him from the verses of the Quran, adaya, supplication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Glorified the name of your Lord. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Seek his forgiveness. For he is the oft, uh, or the one who accepts repentance. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا So this is a proof that the dua in the ruku' is permissible and it is not gonna uh, it's not as well uh, being uh, you could say objected that by saying that there's a hadith of the prophet he said as for the ruku' glorify the name of your lord that doesn't mean that you don't make dua so this dua is his dua because it says here, Subhanaka Muhammadik Rabbil, Allahumma Firli, will Lord forgive for me. That's a dua. So saying dua in the Ruku'ah, it will not be objected by that dua, by that hadith, Amma Ruku'ah, Fa'abdimu Fihi Rabb, which is on the following page. طيب. So the, uh, the uh, actual hadith, which is, inshallah, we're going to be discussing it in the following page, maybe, and that is Fa'amma uh, Ruku'ah. Uh, the fifth thicker. اللهم لك ركعت وبك آمنت ولك أسلمت أنت ربي خشع لك سمعي وبصري ومخي وعظمي وفي لا وعظمي 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 لا وعظمي وعظمي عظم عظم bones there's a mistake in the book yeah of course وفي رواية no which is perfect <laughs> وفي رواية وعظمي which is جمع عظم plural of bone bones no. وعصبي وما استقلت به قدمي لله رب العالمين Oh Allah, to you I have bowed and in you I have believed and to you I have submitted You are my Lord, my hearing, my sight, my bones, my mind So it's my bones, yeah My mind, my <laughs> bones uh, and in brackets and my tendons stand in humility my, for you My tendons Like the, in your bones is awesome. and Asab is, yeah, tendons and the nerves, you know, the nerves will asab Nerves, you know, what do we call that? The, the little thing, maybe tendons, nerves, nerves. Yeah. Uh, they stand in humility before you, and all that which my feet carry are for the sake of Allah, Lord of all worlds. And usually the last statement is actually uh, generalization after specification. In the beginning, he specifies the hearing, the seeing, the brains, mukhi means the, my brain, or have me my bones. And then after that, he says, whatever is being carried by my feet. So what is my cavalry? All of that is being mentioned before. So it's like a, we say, making generalization after specification, which is called emphasization as well, emphasis. طيب. Uh, so this hadith also says, Allahumma laka raka'at wa bika amant wa laka aslamt. When you stop on a word, we don't make the vowel on top of the tap. For example, when I say, Allahumma laka raka'atu wa bika amantu, that's not correct. So when you stop, Allahumma laka raka'at, wa bika amant, wa laka aslamt. That's how we recite the dua, ikhwani. Because you read it, Allahumma laka raka'atu, wa amantu. Wa aslamt, anta rabbi, khashi'a sam'i wa basari, wa mukhi wa azmi, wa asabi, wa mastakallat bihi qadami, lillahi rabbil alameen. That dua, if you said it, once, I think, maybe, that if you manage to say it once behind the imam, alhamdulillah, the imam is doing very well. Because if I was, he's not going to give you time to read that whole dua. Even if you make tasbih three times or five times, he needs the imams a bit longer. Tabla. Allahumma laka raka'at, wa bika amant, wa laka aslamt, wa alayka tawakkalt, anta rabbi, khasha'a sam'i wa basari, wa dami, wa lahmi, wa azmi, وعصبي لله رب العالمين أحسنت Oh Allah, to you I have bowed and in you I have believed and to you I have submitted and upon you I have relied You are my Lord, my hearing, my sight, my blood, my flesh, my bones and my tendons are for the sake of Allah, Lord of all worlds okay, Right, so um, just before I could continue I just wanted, when he said uh, the big hadith number four he said يتأول القرآن I mean, using the Quran as supplication. He, this is the Prophet used to do it a lot of times, and at the same time, he prohibited us from what reciting the Quran in the ruku or the sujood. It's a prohibited. 
But the Awul Quran, they're using the verses of the Quran as a dua, no problem. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fi al-akhirati hasana, wa kina ala manar. That's a dua and an ayah. Same thing here. No, I mean, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ Or so when you say, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ That's an, an ayah, an ayah, so it's a supplication. Huh? So, or, not the number of ayat, the ayat, the last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Huh? And also the last ayat of Surah Al-Ali Imran. Okay? So you could find you could find the du'as and an ayah. If you use it as a du'a, but it is the ayah, no problem. But if you use it as a recitation of the ayah, it is prohibited. So Allah, Rabbana atina fi the, for example, um, uh, Subhanallah, last ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, which says, "Nana mshaman al-Rasul li baadiha." Lillahi. لا اغفر لنا وارحمنا وانصرنا على ربنا اغفر لنا وارحمنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافر so this is an ayah but also can be used as a supplication okay ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آية but في سورة البقرة but at the same time دعاء طيب number seven please سبحان ذي الجبروت والملكوت والكبرياء والعظمة how perfect is he who has all power, kingdoms, magnificence, greatness, and grandeur. This he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite in his night prayer. When we say the night prayer, that means he does not recite it in the obligatory prayer. So this is specified for the night. Because if it's a, a one which is being said in the obligatory, it will be fit for both, obligatory and voluntary. But when it is being specified to a particular prayer, then this one is for the night prayer. Subhana dil malakuti wal jabaruti. Sorry, Subhana dil jabaruti wal malakuti wal kibriyai wal adama. Again, is that the translation of it? Glorified. Uh, <clears throat> how, how perfect is he who has all power, kingdom, magnificence? Al jabaruti is not all power, is omnipotent. Better. Jabarut wal malakuti, what does that mean? Kingdom. Uh, sovereignty as well. Kibriya. Uh, magnificence. Uh, yes, magnificence, because Gabriel yeah. uh, is translated maybe wrongly to us as arrogance gone. Uh, greatness. Greatness. Well done. The lengthening of a ruku'ah. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would make his ruku'ah, his standings after ruku'ah and sujood, and the sitting between the two sajdas, nearly the same in length. Okay, so this is the general. His ruku'ah is equivalent to the time when you say, Allah, liman hamid, equivalent to the sujood, equivalent between the two sajda. So all of that, four things, ruku'ah time, say, Allah, liman hamid, rabbana lakal hamd time, sajda time, and between the sajda time and the second sajda, between the second sajda time, they are almost the same. Almost the same. I mean, I don't know exactly what we say, but almost the same. Qarab, qarib. But sometimes, so that means the, the, the qiyam on its own, you don't match it. But sometimes the Prophet he made all of those four, all of those five, I should say, equivalent to what? To his qiyam, to the recitation. And that is not the trend, it's not all the time, sometimes, Salat al for example. Five. Now, the forbidden of reciting the Quran. No, but just before. Be, before we go ahead, there is a fact here, the Sheikh, yeah, something like a note, I don't know if you. We've said it. Is it permissible to combine between these adhkar in one ruku or is it not? Do you have that benefit? Yes. Go on, read that one, please. Very important. Albani said, leave it on, leave it on the uh, Albani said, scholars differed on whether it is prescribed to say all the above mentioned adhkar in one bowing or not. Ibn al Qayyim was hesitant about which view is more stronger, as indicated in his book, uh, Zad al Mahad. Uh, while Al Namawi affirmed that it is prescribed to do so, as mentioned in his book, Al Adhkar. When he said, it is, the best, it is the best to say all these adhkar in bowing if one is able to. In fact, it is the best to do in respect to the adhkar of other sections. However, uh, Abu Tayyib al-Siddiq Hassan Khan commented on that in uh, Nuzul al-Abrar, al page 84. A person should say just one of the relevant adhkar in one single bowing, not say them all in one bowing, as I do not find any evidence which supports saying them all together in one bowing. The Prophet وسلم, did not say all of these adhkar in one pillar, but rather he used to do say, say any of these adhkar in one pillar. 
and then select another one to say in another pillar. Truly following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better than innovating. The latter view is what I find... So here, here, here this is the saying, should say, this is what the saying of Abu Tayyib is. Damn, stop. Now the saying of the Sheikh al-Albad. So what he says and elaborate on the saying, we want to make a mincemeat and lump everything. So, you you say, so the yes. Sheikh al-Albad says now? He says, the latter view is what I find as the truth. By the permission of Allah... However, it is evident in that the Prophet ﷺ prolonged this pillar and the other pillars, as shall be explained afterwards, until its length of time is near the length of time of the pillar of standing. Hence, if a person intended to follow this act of the sunnah, i.e. prolonging the pillars, he will not be able to do so except by either following the view adopted by Imam al nawawi which states that all the adhkar be said in one pillar, which Ibn al-Nasr reported on page 76 of his book, Qiyam al-Layl, from Ibn al-Jarij to Raj and Ata. Ata. Otherwise, or by repeating the dhikr, which is closer to the sunnah, and Allah knows best. Right. So we do find justification for a person who's prolonging his rukul. Yeah. He says, according to what Imam al Nawi, is just to combine this, you know, to make because maybe the person would start being bored if he keeps repeating one dua, uh, or he would be starting to. Um, I would say that he will not give the right pronunciation. Sometimes he would start cutting off from the dua, chopping off from it. So let's say this person is doing his ruku' and is making it long. Subhanahu rabbil alim, subhanahu rabbil alim. I'm going to say subhanahu rabbil alim, maybe hamdi. Subhanahu rabbil alim, maybe hamdi. Subhanahu rabbil alim, maybe hamdi. Subhanahu rabbil alim, subhanahu rabbil alim, subhanahu rabbil alim, subhanahu rabbil alim. Start going because start now eating some of the letters. So that's why he says that if it's going to be long ruku', you could. I'm giving another dua with it. Okay, so, uh, so Allahumma laka rakatu bika amat laka slamtu. Okay, so for example, the one, so you, you, you could, you know, alternate because of this being long. And I'm saying this, that is because, as I said, about justification, is to synchronize with the saying of Sheikh al-Albani as well, whom he said repetition is closer to the sunnah, but at the same time he said, there's a hadith which is an authentic case. And one of the companions, he came to the Prophet وسلم, after Fajr. And he said to him an array, a vision that he had said, which the Prophet وسلم, had approved to be a, a dhikr that you say it after the salah, which is Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, a hundred times. So this is four, by the way. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. That's four. So up to hundred. So how many times, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, akbar, to make it 100? 25. Yes? So subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. So for us, only as one. So you can do it in your finger here. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. Two. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. Three. Okay? So you make it 100. So if you did, I did, I do like this. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah akbar. One finger. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah akbar. 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 How many times? 20. 20 here. So how many twins I need? Five twenties. So when I finish this hand, it's 100. Tayyip. Sheikh al-Bani says that the Prophet upon hearing this vision of the person, he said, that's the tasbih I'm going to be doing. So Sheikh Rahman, he says this is an upgrade. Upgrade from the dua that the Prophet of Allah, he said, to sabbih thalatha thalatheen. To kabbir thalatha thalatheen. Tahmadillah thalatha thalatheen. That means, subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. Three to ten. You finish. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thirteen, thalatha thalatheen, thirty three times. Allah, 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 Allah. He says the Sheikh Al-Albani, when you say that 33 times like this, subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. Sometimes you start eating some of the letters. So this upgrade comes to the rescue. Because when you say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, differentiate tongue, start going from one, and eating letters will not be as much as if you're repeating the same dua. So can you repeat? SubhanAllah, 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 you might, SubhanAllah, 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 there is a nungam, SubhanAllah, 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 the nungam. So SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. An upgrade. So uh, get this upgrade, inshallah, 100 times. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, but like this. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Until you finish five, then it's one. You don't make tasbih with the left. 
count for the left. And then two, and then three. Each one is remember 20 times, 20 times, 20 times, until you finish 100. And it's very easy. Let's go now, he says, to the dua, and, uh, which is the prohibition. Father. Forbiddance of reciting Quran in Rukur. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the recitation of Quran in Rukur and Sujood. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, I was commanded not have to recite. What time is the Isha, Khwani? No, no, what time is the Jama'ah? Huh? The Jama'ah is eight, no, not quarter past eight? Eight. Okay, so we'll do the Jama'ah and then we'll finish after that. Is that okay? Let's just finish this quickly. Okay? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, I was commanded not to recite Quran in Rukur and Sujood. Therefore, glorify your Lord the mighty and the sublime in Rukur and exert yourself in supplication in Sujood for your supplications are liable to be answered. I'm going to read it again. He, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the recitation of the Quran in Rukur and Sujood. Okay, so we understood that. He, he forbade, so forbade to recite the Quran in the Ruku and in the Sujood. And this prohibition, not just for the Fard, for the Fard and the what? Sunnah. Voluntary, both, okay? Right. So if there is an addition, which is there is, of Ibn Asakir, he says, as for the voluntary prayer, there's no problem. This addition is not authentic. So we should not implement it. We're not allowed to recite, but we could use the Quran as a dua. Remember that. But then he said, and he used to say, I was commanded not to recite Quran in Hukur and Sujood. Therefore, glorify your Lord, the mighty and the sublime. So glorify your Lord as for the Rukur. But we said, that does not contradict when the Prophet likes to make dua. Okay. Also, and exert yourself in supplication in sujood, for your supplications are liable to be answered. Right. So this, and it does not really negate that to make, not to make sujood, uh, sorry, uh, dua in the Rukur. But it emphasizes that the, the dua is a more in the what? In the sujood. Faqamin and yustajamana. Qamin here means jadir, it means he's in. He, is more, he deserves, he deems to have uh, the answer from Allah Azza wa Jal for his dua. By this, alhamdulillah, we have finished up to the end of this. And then we're going to go to saying Sami Allah ibn Hamidah after the prayer. So dua, inshallah, the adhan. Yalla khwani. We don't make an invitation for the adhan. We should be racing each other for the adhan. This is uh, chapter 6.6, .6, standing upright after Rukur and what to say in it. Alhamdulillah, Standing upright after Rukur and what to say in it. Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to rise up from the Rukur while saying, Allah is the one who praises him. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also ordered the man who prayed badly to do so when he said to him, no one's prayer is complete until he says takbir, then he makes Rukur. Then he said, Allahu liman hamida, until he is standing upright. When he sallallahu alayhi wasallam raised his head, he would stand straight until every verbata uh, vertebra returning to its place. That's it. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nawala. This is now the other rukum from Arkan Salah, illa from the prayer of the prayer, pillars of the prayer. And that is after the Rukur, he says, He said in the last statement, uh, when he raised up his head, then all these uh, the bones, which is the spine, goes as it was, means straight. And that is a Rukur, pillar. So the person did not do this, and he went to his sujood before he is upright, where every what? Where he raised his head, he would stand upright until every vertebra. Which, can you just put the mask on? Okay? Don't leave it on a shit. Uh, until every vertebra returned to vertebra. its place. Every vertebra, is the Quran. Every, every vertebra goes back in its place. So you have to do like this. You've seen some people when they say, before they are upright, going down. The prayer is invalid. That rakat will be invalid. That is why here, the Prophet Sallam, he said, every vertebra to go back to its place. Then he said also, so say, Sami Allah. This is for both, for the person who is leading and for the person who is behind the imam. Sami Allahu liman hamid, as we're going to see, inshallah, and 
detail this matter because the scholars had differed about the person who's behind the Imam. The Imam says, Sami Allah Iman Hamid, and also he says, Rabbana wa lakala. The Ma'moom behind him says, Sami Allah Iman Hamid, also he says, Rabbana. Now, Tabak. Then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would say while standing upright, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, our Lord, and to you be all praise. He has commanded everyone to do so while praying behind an Imam or not by saying, Pray as you have seen me praying. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, the Imam is made to be followed. When he says, Sami'a Allah liman hamidah, then say, Allahumma rabbana laka alhamd. Wa laka. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbana wa laka alhamd. Wa laka alhamd. Wa laka. That's another mistake. Yeah. Oh. And Allah will hear you. For indeed, Allah. I don't hear. Alhamdulillah from everybody. Loud, loud, ikhwani. Alhamdulillah, loud. Alhamdulillah. 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 Allah yuslah balakum. She is loud. I'm loud. I'm lihdikum Allah wa yuslah balakum. Abu Dawood, he hired the boat from the ship to go to the person who said, Sami Allah liman. And when he had sneezed, boat, and he cost him dinar. At that time, dinar is a lot of money. Just for that person to say to him, Arhamuk Allah. Why did you hire a boat? He said, well, he said, after that, Yadikumullah, it's the May Allah guide you and fix his situation. It could be his supplication will be fulfilled. Forget about the dinar I'm going to spend. Whereas we hear here, I can't hear, Arhamuk Allah. I say, sneezed, I say, Alhamdulillah, you have to make this meet to me. It's a must upon each individual. It's not like, I've got the right it's not to say it. You will be sinned with Allah. You have to, to say to him, Arhamuk Allah. And loud. If he said it loud, of course. If he said, mm -mm -mm -mm, don't say him anything. Say to him, mm -mm -mm, again. If he sneezes, said, mm -mm -mm -mm. no. He says, I'm Samia. When he says, Alhamdulillah, you hear him, Alhamdulillah, he says, Arhamuk Allah. And he used to say, Yadikum Allah, Yusleh Balakum. These are little things, very important. Very important. Now, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the imam is made to be followed. When he says, Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah, and then say, Allahumma rabbana wa laka alhamd. And Allah will hear you, for indeed Allah the Most High said upon the tongue of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah. Right. Now, this is the this is the issue where the, the scholar, they said, well, here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you had heard the imam, the imam saying, Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah, you say what? As a person behind? Allahumma rabbana. Allahumma rabbana. Or rabbana wa Allahumma could be an extra as well. Allahumma or Rabbana wa laka alhamd. So why do you say we say Sani Allahu liman hamira? This is the issue, Ikhwani. Tayyip. Uh, no, I didn't say to you. Sorry, sorry. You are, <laughs> like the person wanted to correct me to just know. He was triggered. I didn't say mistake here. I don't think he wanted to say something. Uh, slowly, slowly. In this ahadith, there is a proof that the sunnah for the imam is to combine between a tasmi' wa tahmit. Okay, so the Imam, okay, he says, Sami Allahu liman hamida. He also say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. And this is the madhab of the Jumur. And this is what Abu Yusuf and Muhammad had said, the two students of Abu Hanifa, in contrast to Abu Hanifa himself, where the Imam, according to Abu Hanifa, he only says, Sami Allahu liman hamida. And he doesn't say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Also with Abu Hanifa, the Imam Malik. He says that the Imam says, Sami Allahu liman hamida. And he doesn't say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. And there is no proof for them, for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had said to the people, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray like you have seen me praying. So Prophet of Allah, does he say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd or not? He does. Remember of a hadith. We're going to see them later on. He says, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So how can we say to the Imam, don't do like the Prophet of Allah. You are different. He says, Sami'a Allahu liman hamida and Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Because the Prophet وسلم, said so. And this proof as well, we use it for the people who are behind the Imam. But there's a hadith, he says, if the Imam said, Sami Allahu liman hamida, then you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Where is Sami Allahu liman hamida? One, I would like you to go to Imam al Nawawi. In his majmu'ah, he had this, discussed this issue in details regarding the ma'moon behind the Imam saying, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Also, the saying of Al-Hafad ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, that this mas'ala, this issue of ta'neem is similar to this mas'ala, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أَمَّنَ الْإِمَانِ أَمِّنُ If the Imam says, Ameen, you say to him, Ameen. It's not to say that you don't say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Don't say, Sami'a Allahu liman hamida. So if the Imam said, Sami'a Allahu liman hamida, you say Rabbana wa lakal hamd. It's like when the in Prophet said, if the Imam says Ameen, you also say Ameen. 
So here it doesn't mean that the Imam does not say Amin. Do you understand me? When he says, when the Imam says Amin, say then Amin. So the Imam, it that means the Imam and the people behind him. And also, uh, sorry, when the Imam says what is no Amin. When the Imam says what a bali, you say what? Amin. Remember? So it doesn't mean that the Imam doesn't say Amin. Remember that. When he says what a bali, you say Amin. But it doesn't mean that Imam does not say Amin. Same thing here. When the Imam says Sami Allahu liman hamida, you say Rabbana wa lakal hamida. It doesn't mean you don't say Sami Allahu liman hamida. Why? Because the Prophet Allah said, Inna ma ju'il al-Imam li yu'tamma bih. The Imam was made to be what? Followed. Fa'idha kabbara fakabbiru wa'idha raka'a farka'u wa'idha sajana fasjudu. Okay? And then here, why did he then the Prophet Allah emphasize on Rabbana wa lakal hamida? Because if he didn't say this, then the people will say what the Imam is saying. Sami Allahu liman hamida. They don't know that the Imam is going to say Rabbana wa lakal hamid because he says it what? Silently. Imam says Allahu Akbar. We hear him say Allahu Akbar. He says Sami Allahu liman hamida. We hear him. We say Sami Allahu liman hamida. So why does the Prophet say, Rab say Rabbana wa lakal hamid? Because the Prophet of Allah is telling us that the Imam is saying Rabbana wa lakal hamid what? Silently, quietly. Because you don't hear that, you must say it. Because if he didn't say this, you could have just said, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Without Rabbana wa lakal hamid. Because we are following the Imam. Takbir, we hear him takbir. Sami Allah, we say tasmi'ah. But here, yeah, because we can't hear Rabbana wa lakal hamid, Prophet Allah said, Say Rabbana wa lakal Because of this, and because the Prophet Allah said, Inna ma ju'il al imam yu'tamma bi, you follow the Imam. And because the Prophet Allah said, Sallu kama ra'itum wa yusalli, then the correct opinion is not the opinion of those scholars who are respected. Not when they said, don't say Sami Allah, which is an opinion of mighty shiuch, even from the contemporary ones, like the Imam Ibn Maz, rahimahullah, who said, you don't say Sami Allah. He acknowledged this is a controversial matter. And the correct opinion, as I said, is to say, Rabbana wa lakal um, By the way, this, they're, they're taking this as a proof from this riwayah that this is from the Imam for Tahmeed, uh, and this is. I mean, suitable for the Imam, and as for the Rabbana wa lakal hamd, is suitable for the people who are behind it. This, as I said, uh, it is not correct because uh, that the Imam should be also asking and responding. Same thing. So the Ma'mumin, where they are being commanded to follow the Imam in everything except for what the proof says otherwise. When does the proof say otherwise? When the Prophet Wasallam, he was reciting loudly and he told them off who recites loudly. So we're not supposed to recite loudly. Okay? So we are to follow the Imam in Takbir, in Tasmi' also, and everything regarding the, uh, regard, also in the Tahmeed, which they don't hear. Right. Then he says here, وَعَلَّلَ الْأَمْرِ فضل. Peace Allah alayhi wa sallam also explained that why, further, why do we say Rabbana wa lakal hamdu the imam? Fadal. That further in another hadith saying, for he whose saying coincides with that of the angels will have his past sins forgiven. Right. How, what is synchronizing? Yeah, some, so some of the scholars, so they said this hadith is not uh, uh, done for the Sami Allah liman hamida. For man wafaqa qawlahu qawla al-malaika is actually not to do with Sami Allah liman hamida, it's to do with the ta'meen. But this is far-fetched. I've heard this from uh, our shaykh, from Sheikh uh, Mashur, Allah, that this is for the tas for the uh, for the ta'min. Because the ta'min had a spe special one, which the Prophet of Allah, he said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ الْإِمَامُ قَالَ آمين فأمين. If you have heard the Imam says, Amin, then say what? Amin. Well, if you heard so the Imam says, الضالين, say Amin. فَإِنَّ مَنْ وَافَقَ تَأْمِينُهُ تَأْمِينَ الْمَلَائِكَ He whom he's ta'min. Is synchronizing with the ta'min of the angels. All his previous sins are to be forgiven. Similar to this. But it doesn't mean that they are the same thing. This is to do with Sami Allah liman hamid. I will explain it. So the Imam is going to say Amin, and the angel is going to say Amin with whom? With the Imam. So if I want to synchronize with the angels, I need to synchronize with whom? The Imam. I don't hear the angels say no, Amin. Do I? Do I? No. So the imam, in another hadith, he said, if the imam says amin, the angels will say amin. So the angels synchronize with the imam. Now, if I synchronize with the imam and with the angels, I need to synchronize with the imam. So when he says, what a and he says, ah, I will go with him. Amin with him along with him. And that's how I synchronize. This one, the synchronization, synchronization of 
Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Is that synchronized? Because you don't hear the Imam saying Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Sami'a Allahu liman hamid. He says, Sami'a Allahu liman hamid. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. You don't hear it. Scholars, they said, one of them, he said, verily, which is Ibn Abd al-Barr in a Tanweer book, he said that the, the muwafaqa is not in the wordings. The muwafaqa is actually in from being mukhlis, being mujtahid. I mean, your sincerity, your striving, your intention, which is uh, uh, the truthful intention, your repentance, which is the correct repentance. If that is to be there, synchronizing, then all your previous sins will be forgiven. Khawani subhanAllah, there are little things in the prayer we can do and we get mighty reward. Imagine that you said, Ameen with the Imam. All your previous sins will be forgiven. So please, when the Imam says, Walabbalin, hold your breath. Until the Imam says, ah. But as soon as the Imam says, While I'm saying this, somebody says, ah. Before even, even finish, Walabbalin. He's already started, I mean. Ya akhi, hold, hold, hold. Hold until wala ballin. Uh, and then you say, Ameen. That's how we say that. We're going to do a practice now. Yalla. Wala ballin. Uh, somebody said, <laughs> said somebody before. See? You have to wait. I have to trigger it first. I have to take a breath. But wala ballin took more of my breath. So already he said, well, uh, this, is, this is, by the way, the minimum. People, oh, <laughs> listen to every prayer. So the imam, he has to say, I mean, loud. So the people can hear him. So it could synchronize with him. Some people, they don't say it. That's the correct opinion. So that's how we wait until the imam, ah, and you go with him, I mean. Bye. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to raise his hands when standing upright, according to the ways mentioned in the section opening takbir. And while standing, he sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, as mentioned earlier, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, our Lord, and to you be all praise. Or, Rabbana lakal hamd, our Lord, to you be all praise. Uh, just before you say that, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, and Rabbana lakal hamd, without the wow, without the wow, I would like to make sure you understand as well something. Sahib uh, al Mawi, he said, Sahib al Hawi. he said, uh, the, he said, verily, um, the person, the Imam, he has to say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, as the Prophet of Allah sallam, he said, in order that the Ma'mumin, they know that he had went from the Rukur to the other pillar, which is the Arraf'u min Rukur, getting up from the Rukur. Just like he makes it audible for the Takbir, say, Allahu Akbar. And then he would say, Sami Allah, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, secretly. As for the ma'moon, for he does it secretly in all of that. But what about if there is people behind, cannot hear the imams, uh, uh, we call it tasbih, or sorry, not, sorry the takbir, or Sami Allah, liman hamida. The speaker is not reaching those people. So we call something, it's called tabliq, yes? Tabliq. So the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, there's another person in the middle of the prayer there. He wants to make it for well, other people. We say what? Allahu Akbar. Now we come to the point. When the Imam says, Sami Allahu Iman Hamida, what does the people say, including the Haram? Say, Rabbana wa lakal And that's wrong. The person who's making tabligh, he says, Sami Allahu Iman Hamida, not Rabbana wa lakal Okay? So that's the tabligh. One of my students, he was uh, learning this from me, and we went with Hajj with me. When we went Hajj, we were in Arafah. And in Arafah, we were stranded, supposed to leave Maghrib time, so we could make our Maghrib and Isha in Muzdalifah. But our coach was the last. And we're getting close to the midnight. Midnight is the last time you could pray Maghrib and Isha. It's at the end. It was about half past 11. And the coach did not arrive. I said, people, we're not going to jeopardize our Maghrib and Isha. So we did our Maghrib and Isha. And we're talking about 200 people maybe in the tent. It's a big tent. So I lined them up and I made the prayer. And the sisters are in another tent, but they could hear us from behind. And I made the, what do you call it? The mega, mega, mega speaker. Mega, yeah. It's okay. Alhamdulillah, loud enough. Now, 
I told the person who is about four or five rows behind, and he's the tallest and the strongest in voice, and he's closer to the tent of the sisters, so that he could really make the tabligh, echoing my takbir. So I said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then I recited Fatiha and recited the surah, Allahu Akbar for Rukua, and then I said, Sami Allahu liman hamida. What did he say? It's my student. He said, What? Sami Allahu liman hamida. It was an army. He said, to, They say to him, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. <laughs> Wallahi. Maybe he's listening to me as well as the moment. It's called Nakhla. But he told the person, mashallah. Uh, they're correcting him. Not the first raka'ah. The third raka'ah. They're telling him off while he prays. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. When I finished my Maghrib, before I started my Isha, I started explaining, I'm going to pray the Isha, but let me tell you, all of you, you're doing something which you have heard from the scholars, and he has as well doing something which he had heard from the scholars as well. And we believe that he is correct, even though he's a revert. The person is doing this revert, by the way, to Islam. It's not a like a Muslim-born family. No, no. Because he's a revert, if it was me making tabligh, they will not dare to say to me that. You understand me? If somebody is known, they will be scared. But this one is a revert. They hammered him. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. I mean, Don't say, Sami Allah, Niman Hamidah. So Alhamdulillah, the second two rakah, which is the two rakah of the Isha. Remember, we're doing two rakah instead of four of the Isha. We've done it, and everybody went quiet. Sami Allah, Niman Hamidah. They said, Sami Allah, Niman Hamidah. And everybody, somebody, hey, man jahila shay'an a'adah. When this person, he's got no knowledge of something, he will have an enmity. This is natural enmity. Enmity towards which we don't know. I don't know, okay, this. I've been praying all my life. I've never heard this. So he stands like a, a, you know, something, a position away from him. I'm not going to accept it. You're not going to digest it yet. Tabal. Well, standing here, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say, as mentioned earlier, Rabbana wa laka alhamd, our Lord, and to you be all praise, or Rabbana laka alhamd, our Lord, to you be all praise. And sometimes he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to add at the beginning of the two statements, Allahumma. So, Allahumma. so we've got how many times now? We've got, Allahumma rabbana laka alhamd. Allahumma rabbana wa laka alhamd. So we got now four. Say, rabbana laka alhamd. Rabbana wa laka alhamd. Allahumma rabbana laka alhamd. Allahumma rabbana wa laka alhamd. Do you understand that? I repeat them again. Rabbana laka alhamd. Allahumma rabbana laka alhamd. Rabbana wa laka alhamd. Allahumma rabbana wa laka alhamd. Four versions, which is correct. By the way, yani, which is showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refused to make something perfect except for his book. Everybody is liable to mistakes. Regardless who he is. Ibn al-Qayyim is a student of Shaykh al-Islam, also called Shaykh al-Islam. He is making a mistake which is, maybe you think, oh, he's not a scholar, how could he miss this mistake? He had denied, he had objected the word Allahumma. You only say Rabbana laka alhamd, Rabbana wa laka alhamd, but not Allahumma Rabbana wa laka alhamd. And he did not see it with his own eyes. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. And most of the Liman, Sahih al-Bukhari is supposed to be, you know, engraved in the, on the heart of Imam al-Qadim. They, they used to memorize these hadith. Okay? They, don't, they didn't have the shamila like us. We put like this, mashallah, everything goes, uh, it's from their memory. Okay? From their memory. They always take as one. Sometimes they don't give you the exact quote, they give it to you similar because he's in his archive, he memorized the saying of that scholar, and he heard that scholar said such and such. When you match it, it's not word for word because he's not using the shamila, the computer you use in the moment, everything at the fingertips of yours, mashallah. No, no, no. From his backyard memory. So Imam al Qayyim, rahimahullah, he had denied the existence of Allahumma, then it is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah. Right, we're gonna stop here. Uh, no, no, finish, finish until uh, till that number five. What can I add more? He sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to order to do this, saying when the Imam says "Sami Allah liman hamida," then say "Allahumma Rabbana lak alham." For he who's saying coincides with that of the angels will have his past sins forgiven. Right, Allah subhanahu wa taala here. So and then after that we're gonna start, and sometimes he would add the following. Yes. So it's not another dua. This is like Subhana Rabbi al Adim and Allahumma laka raka. That's different. This is addition. So he used to add to Rabbana wa laka alham, min al samawat min al arz, and so on and so forth. Ahl al thana'i wal majd. We're going to do that, inshaAllah, next time. And we are doing very well in terms of uh, how many pages are with.
alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm prepared for this. If you have any questions regarding what you heard, please go ahead. And I don't want to catch you on a long time. If you want me to go ahead, I'll go ahead. Shall I continue? Or shall I take questions? Halas? Don't have to look at me. Boss. Father, you Mr. Boss. The microphone would be better. And give him my microphone. Oh, no, that's okay. Get closer to him. No, get closer to him. That's it. Two microphones. Uh, so you explain how the tabligh, the, he says, Sami Allah, Hulaman Hamila. But what about the uh, Muslim? What do they say? Sami Allah, Hulaman Hamila. Sami Allah. I'm talking about the person who is making audible to the people. He says, with the Imam, Sami Allah, Hulaman Hamila. Where the people in the haram, the person who does this, when the Imam says, Sami Allah, Huliman Hamida, what does he say? Rabbana alak alham. Correct, Imam? <laughs> we say, it is wrong. Because they, they based upon what the Sheikh Ibn Baz has said. Rahimahullah. But as I said, you'll find a very good detailing of this in a number of the scholars where the, uh, where we, we say this is the correct opinion. Wallahu alam. And we respect the other scholars. No. Uh, second question is, uh, you know the Rafa al Yadain, bad tahiyat, is it only is it in every raqqa or is it only bad tahiyat? We, ha we haven't come to the we haven't come to the raising of the hands with the. Ahmed is not giving them authority, that's maybe. Asalaamu Alaikum. Salaam Tarakat. Was, what, what, was you were you trying to open the microphone? No, there was no reception. Your voice was cutting out. So it just came through now to you know unmute. Hmm. Um, so my question is, if someone is praying and there's a knock at the door, I don't know if you can hear me because your video is frozen. I could hear you. Oh, okay. Um, if someone is praying and there's a knock at the door, and in order to answer the door, they would have to turn away from the Qibla, but also if they live in a block of flats, there will be a few rings to, for them to answer. Is that okay to do that, to turn away from the Qibla, but also to do that a few times, or is it better just to stop your Salah and start again? So you've cut out the volume, the... We can't hear you at all, Sheikh.
can connect. I'm sorry, I'm not going to connect to this. Okay. Ahmed, can you hear me now? Ahmed. Okay, Faisal, can you hear me now? Faisal. Yes, Sheikh, we, I can hear you loud and clear. So why Ahmed is not responding? I don't understand that. Maybe he wants to get a snack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that to get a snack, Sheikh. <laughs> 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 That was funny. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, internet is going off and on. I don't understand why. Uh, it's going, I'm just losing you guys and coming back again. So I don't know. The internet is, I'm using my phone. I'm using the router of the masjid and there's something wrong. Right. So I'll just go back to the question of the sister. Now, I, I, I heard part of it and part of it, I did not hear it. Uh, I'll try to make my best to understand the question. So this person, he has... He's in the prayer and somebody is knocking onto the door. And this person needs to go onto another direction other than the Qibla to answer that door. And then he's got more buttons. That's what he really understands, is that more buttons to, to, for example, open the door. Can you explain to us, Zohra, what do you mean by that, more buttons? So the person lives in a block of flats. So first there's the intercom that needs to be pressed and then the front door when they get to the correct floor so the person who's praying would have to answer the intercom no, carry on no, praying no no, no. the uh, this is too much work here the person if he wants to open the door and this is a necessity if it's a voluntary then we will you know keep sort of we will not make the restriction as much as the obligatory so if he's an obligatory then he should be answering the door if he believes this is important. It's very important. Like, for example, his family is outside, his father and mother, for example. And if his father's short fused, he might be you know, yelling at him afterwards. And he would say, why did you keep me outside? So if it is the case, we do like the Prophet ﷺ, he did to Aisha, which he knocked on the door. And the Prophet ﷺ is praying his voluntary. So what he did, he walked towards the door. If the door is behind me or on my left or on my right, I will keep myself to the Qibla and I reverse, go to the right, go to the left. But I don't turn my chest away from the Qibla. That's not correct. I only turn it in necessity. Like I'm, I'm fighting an enemy. I have to turn my chest because they're going to kill me. But in case of not necessity, always you are directing yourself to the Qibla. So here, the, the uh, for example, uh, you could turn your, away from the Qibla. Let's say that you have started the prayer and you remember that you are not on purity, you're on Janaba, where you just said to the people behind you, whom have been trained with this, and your washing shower room is close by, then you go and then you, you can face other than the Qibla because you need to do so. You have a shower and also clean yourself, it takes about two or three minutes, and you come back, and the people still waiting in their position for the Fatiha. As I said, they have to be trained, because the Prophet had did that. And the companions waited for him to go and make full ghusl, and he was dripping from water, and then he continued the prayer. He didn't start the Takbir al-Haram again. He's already done the Takbir al-Haram, but he remembered he was on Janaba. As I said, you can't do this. Unless, as I said, the people behind you are scholars, students of knowledge, because the people are going to say, where are, you, where are you going? And they're in the prayer. Where are you going? Where are you heading? <laughs> so, in that such case, I would recommend for you say, brothers, I'm sorry, I'm on Janama. Let me go and finish. Make my wudu. And then they will wait for you uh, as in sitting down and waiting. But the companions stood like this until the Prophet got back to them. So, if it is like this, I would say, you could, if it's necessary, you could, you could go to the door, you press the intercom, but you don't talk to the people. Hello, yes, if you get to the third floor, I will press another button. No. Okay. And you have to press on the door, not to, for example, lift and see the screen. Who is he and all of that? Because if it's, you see the screen, don't open the door. Just make your prayer a bit faster within the, within the limits which is allowed. Okay. Instead of saying subhanallah three times, say it once. Instead of reading the Fatiha and the Surah, just Fatiha. 
and make it inshallah quick within the, the limits, as I said, the borders of acceptance, validation. Now, has that answers your question? Yes, Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Ya Ahmed, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, but... Uh, where, where were you, Madi? Where were you? Somebody right said, here. I was talking. I, th I think maybe, may Allah bless her, I think my daughter sabotaged my microphone today by accident. Your daughter sabotaged your microphone? La hawla wa la quwwata illa. Put her in prison. I think she played with the uh, volume, and that's why you couldn't hear me. <laughs> that's why. Uh, but what did you say, Faisal? He was doing what? Having a snack, he thinks. No, I don't snack a bit, only before or after. No, Faisal, Faisal said something. We didn't hear it properly. What did you say, Faisal? No, Sheikh, Faisal I, I did say that. I said he went to grab a bite. He went to get a snack. I did say that. I was joking, oh, of course. Is... <laughs> no, I, I know that, but people hear it. I didn't hear it properly. Okay, here it shows. Right. Never mind. He could have a snack. <laughs> Right, let's go to another person from here. You know, nobody? Okay, I'll go to oh, Faisal. Got a question? Uh, you are having snack now. We can't hear you. Faisal. Ahmed muted me by mistake, I think. Um, uh, so oh, Ahmed, come on, Ahmed. <laughs> That's it. Finish. Uh, to, to clarify, Sheikh, you said we can make dua in ruku. So does that mean we can make dua for asking for a spouse or a child or for a good job in, in ruku like we would in sujood? You could do what in sujood you do in ruku, but the sujood is more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said that if people think that they can't make dua in the ruku, we can. But remember, the adhiyah goes to the priority, whether in sujood or ruku, to what the Prophet ﷺ had said in the sujood, Prophet Allah asked for forgiveness for the sins. Okay, so to ask for a wife and ask for this, no problem. It's important for your deen, but not to ask, oh Lord, make my business 50% profitable. I mean, you put in dunya into the akhirah. After the prayer, do what you like. But in the prayer, leave it. I think a part of the part of your deen is actually to marry, part of your deen to make hajj, part of your deen. But not to start making your business and son your prayer. That's not correct. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you good companions. Keep away the evil and the ones who are conning away from you. That's good, inshallah. Now, fadl ya ustad. There's nobody here. Ahmed. Fadl ya Ahmed. The question is, we said when the Imam says, you say, hamd, we said it doesn't mean that we don't say, can we also say that when the Imam says, you say, it doesn't mean that the Imam doesn't say, we have said that. I think maybe you are having a snack. We said that when we were talking, that it doesn't mean that the same thing. Uh, we mentioned it, and we said that the Imam also, but the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam said, Sallu kama usalli. Pray like you have seen me praying. In, in that, we could see now, in the adhkar are going to come to it later on, the Prophet said, Rabbana wa alhamd. Okay? And he was an Imam himself. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. By this, we shall all finish. Subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiraka tu mulaik. And by the way, Ahmad's snack is just only for a joke. المداعبة فبارك الله فيكم